All right, so you have space where you can take notes and you can rewatch this video if you need to to fill in your journal items if you haven't done those yet. Remember those need to be sent to me. And then we have an example of a case study here that I want to go through with you about um, there we go. So this is a, another case study and maybe not as well designed as the as the clinical trial for the polio vaccine, but we need to talk about a bunch of different ways that we need to look at studies. So I want to kind of go through this one with you. The manufacturer of a new vitamin, and we're going to call it vitamin X, decides to sponsor a study to determine the vitamin's effectiveness in curing the common cold. 500 of the 50,000 college students in the San Diego area were paid to participate as subjects in this study. Now, I want you to understand they were paid to participate. That's actually normal. We do that very often because a lot of times people will participate in a study if they're going to get paid, but they won't participate if there's no money in it for them. So it's very normal for us to pay them. They don't get paid a ton, but they get paid a little bit. Okay, so all the participating subjects were suffering from a cold at the start of the study. The subjects were each given two tablets of vitamin X per day. Based on information provided by the subjects themselves, 457 of the 500 subjects were cured of their colds in three days. The average number of days a cold lasts is 4.87 days. So on the surface, it would seem that this treatment, this vitamin supplement, was curing the cold in a lot fewer days than was normal for a cold to last. So let's take a look a little deeper then. As a result of this study, the manufacturer launched an advertising campaign based on the claim that vitamin X is more than 90% effective in curing the common cold. Hmm. Describe as specifically as you can the target population for the study. So when, when you think about target population, remember you're talking about who we intend this study to apply to. So who are the people that we think will benefit from knowing this about the common cold and the vitamin K, vitamin X? So vitamin X is more than 90%. And you can get a clue here, they launched an advertising campaign. And so you can assume that they're talking about anybody. So the target population, is all people who catch colds, which of course means everybody, right? Compare and contrast target population, sampling frame, and the sample for the study. So the target population is who we want it to apply to, so it's all the people who could get a cold. And then the sampling frame is the group from which we chose our sample and that group, looking back, the 50, oh, it says right there, 500 of the 50,000 college students in the San Diego area. So the sampling frame, the target population, is all people basically, right? while the sampling frame is 50,000 San Diego college students and the sample is 500 of those students. Okay, so you see how you have the sampling, the target population is the big group of people you want your study to be about. The sampling frame is the group from which you choose your, your sample, and then the sample are the actual ones that get chosen to participate. All right, so is there selection bias? And selection bias, remember, is when you 
have a whole group of people that are not allowed to participate. They're excluded from the study. And we can think about that for this study that, yeah, there are a lot of people who are excluded. So yes, because only San Diego college students can participate. Okay. Was the study a controlled study? Explain. Did they have a control group that they that they gave no treatment to? All the participants and then it just says subjects were given two tablets a day. So there was no control group. And we could say because every participant was given the same treatment. All right. List at least three possible causes other than the effectiveness of vitamin X that could have confounded the results of the study. So since we didn't have a control group, there is probable confounding going on because there could be other things that are causing the students to get better. So let's think of a few of those things. We could have um, the maybe, see, this is something that my students usually tell me, the cold could have been almost, you know, partly started when the people showed up to do the study. Like it didn't, there was no way to tell how many days they'd already been suffering with the cold. So cold was underway at start of study. And from the point of intervention to when they they felt like the cold was done, maybe it was three days, but possibly they'd already been suffering from it for two days. Number two, what else could have confounded their study? Well, it could have been that the cold was, oh, they reported their own symptoms, didn't they? So the students self-reported. symptoms. And remember that whole thing about the blind and the double blind? It was all done because we didn't want the the people we were doing the treatment to to have a bias about whether they were cured or not or for the doctors to have a bias. But here it's like the worst possible case. The students themselves are saying, oh yeah, I feel better now. So there could be a total placebo effect going on. So that's in addition, the placebo effect, because they could think, I'm taking a pill, therefore I'm going to get better. And we have no group to compare them against. And well, there's three, but th there are many more. If you can think of other ones, it's possible. There were some others that we, we've thought of before that were like age of participants, health, of participants and we can't really call out that they um, that they paid them because that's pretty normal so we we can't say oh well they paid them so therefore they got better results that I mean it could because they didn't do control group I think that's the biggest thing so four things that indicate a bad design and so the very first no control group
And that's the biggest one. They didn't have a control group. And number two, no placebo. That would have been good. And three, no doctor. evaluating in a double blind situation. Okay, and a couple more. No randomization. Because what happens when you pay somebody to be in a study is you get all these same people that know how to answer all your questions. And so you have to be careful to put them into different groups so that you don't always have all the people who are really helpful and they're going to answer however you think they should. You don't want all of them into one group. So you have to be careful about that too. Okay, so some suggestions. Well, we know they need a controlled placebo group and they need double blind for their design and they they need randomized assignment in two groups those three things will make their study a lot better. And if they have a doctor um, actually measuring the symptoms, and the start of the cold, they need that too.